Hello everyone, welcome to the classroom. Today we're going to be reviewing all of those rules you learned in beginning algebra, the basic exponent rules. So hang on, here we go. Multiply and simplify, it says. But also over here, it says simplify your answer, type at exponential notation with positive exponents. So we need to discuss a little bit of vocabulary. This three, is called the base. The six is called the exponent. Rule number one, when you multiply like bases, when you multiply, like bases, that, that is a like, basis. You add the exponents. You, while you. That's not very hopeful, is it? You add the exponents. All right, you don't add the bases. You don't multiply the bases. You just write the base once and then you add the exponents. And there you go, three to the 12, three to the 12. Here, two is the base. Two is the base. They're the same base, so they're like bases. Negative nine and five are the exponents. Here we're multiplying. So I write the base once, and then I add the exponents. And that will equal two to the negative four power. So here's something else to remember. When the exponent is negative, that's an indicator that the base is in the wrong location. What do you mean location? Here's what I mean. There are two possible places for any number to be. The number can be up in the numerator or down in the denominator. Now here we see two to the negative four. So it's understood that this is two over one to the negative four. This negative sign on the exponent is an indicator that the two, the base, should really be down here. In other words, the answer should be one over two to the positive four. Two to the fourth power is 16. I don't know how they want you to give the answer. It'll take me a minute to look. 
but the answer is 1 over 16 or 1 16th. Let's see what the answer is. Oh, there it is. They wanted you to leave it as 2 to the 4th power. On the bottom, 1 over 2 to the 4th power. A negative exponent has nothing to do with the sign in front of the base. It has everything to do with whether the base is located in the numerator or in the denominator. Now here the base is four and we're multiplying. That will be four to the negative nine plus negative four, which is four to the negative 13. This is four to the negative 13 over one. Negative 13 in the exponent position is a sign that we need to move the four down to the denominator. And then the negative 13 will be positive 13. Now everybody is happy. At least the exponents and the bases are happy. Now here we have 6x in parentheses raised to the third power and 8x parentheses raised to the second power. We're going to have to break into those parentheses first. This is going to be 6 to the third power times x to the third power times 8 to the second power times x to the second power, which will be six to the third power times eight to the second power. We'll figure those out in a minute. x to the third power times x to the second power. That was a very big x. These are like bases. So this is going to be six to the third power times eight to the second power. Let's go ahead and put that in the calculator. Six carat three, hit the right arrow key to come down, times, well, I could do it like that, eight carat two, and then hit the right arrow key again. Six to the third times eight to the second power, enter. 13,824. 13,824. X to the three plus two, which is five. And this is our answer right here. We don't have to guess. Just go ahead and work the problem out. Okay, now here, notice that the negative three is the exponent on the X and the X is inside the parentheses with negative two. So another way to write this would be negative two times X to the negative three. Notice that two, negative two, is not being raised to the negative three just the x. Now times six times x to the negative six. 
So I'm going to have negative two times positive six times x to the negative three plus negative six. That's going to be negative times positive is negative. Negative 12 times x to the negative nine. Now we assume this is over one. Now be very careful. It's only the x that's going to move down to the denominator. This is going to be negative 12 over x to the positive nine, which is negative 12 over x to the nine. There you go. Let's see if my math lab agrees with me. Yes, it does. Notice how we didn't keep the, the negative sign up on the top. We moved it down in front. Same thing would be true if that negative had been down here. We'd move it up in front. Oh, goodness. I bet you remember problems like this. The best way that I have personally found to think of this. Oh, wait a minute. They're not even asking us to work it. Are they? Oh, it's one of those long problems. OK. OK. Well, we're dividing. So the rule you're going to be using is the quotient rule. And here's what the quotient rule says. Here's an example. I'll use the A's. A to the seven over A to the four. The bases are the same. A to the seven minus four equals A to the three. That's what the quotient rule is without using a lot of words. And then what this problem does is it lets you work this out step by step, work the whole problem out. So I'll leave this to you. It's easier to do in my math lab, but you can look at it here. This is one of those walk you through it step by step problems. But, oh, what the heck, let's do it. Here we're going to have 20 over 25. Now, watch this. The A's match and the B's match. So we're going to have A to the seven minus four and B to the negative seven minus negative four. And that will give us, let's see, 20 over 25 is four fifths. A to the third. B, we need to take an extra step here, negative seven plus four. So that will be four over Oh, four over five, okay. A to the third, B to the negative third. Ah, and it wants to go down there. So our final answer is going to be four A to the third over five B to the third. B 
because when you change the position, you change the sign on the exponent also. Now this will help you answer all of those questions below. And there are a lot, goodness. So here's the quotient rule again. Here we've got base six to the exponent six divided by base six to the two six. When you divide like bases, you subtract the exponents. Six times six raised to the six minus two is six to the fourth power and that's all they're asking you to do. At this point, <clears throat> I'm feeling insecure. And I need to make sure, yes, it tells me I'm recording. Okay, ever so often I get a little insecure and worry that I'm not really recording and I'm going through all this and I'll just have to go through it again. I don't really want to. So I write the base once. Here's the top, <clears throat> excuse me, exponent minus the bottom exponent, which happens to be negative. So there are actually two ways to work this, except it says, except it says divide. But if we wanted to break the rules a little bit, let me do this. That's 15, 6 to the 15th power. And that is the way they want us to do it. But, but if we wanted to live dangerously, we could have more fun this way. Is that cool? Let me move this over just a tad. There, we get the same answer. You do have choices. If I were you, I'd try this both ways, just for the practice. Now there are two ways to work that too. So let me get a cup of coffee and I'll show you. The straightforward quotient rule way is to say, oh, what a surprise. These have the same base. So I'm going to take the top exponent and subtract the bottom exponent. So that this is six to the negative eight, understood over one. We'll have six to the positive eight and a one on top. That's one way to work it. That's the legal way. But there is a nice, little shortcut. Watch. Six to the negative six over six to the positive two. Now you ask yourself, which exponent is bigger? Cover up my coffee so the fly doesn't get in. The fly is here wanting to learn math as well, I guess. 2 is bigger than negative 6. So another way I could do this, instead of doing it like this, and then this, and then this, would be
to do my subtraction underneath. 2 minus negative 6. Oh, and I have to put a 1 up there. Yeah. So this would be 1 over 6 to the 2 plus 6, which is 8. Same answer. It can be faster sometimes to have a bunch of tricks up your sleeve. If you're wearing sleeves. Now, I don't play around with things like this. Yes, negative two is a bigger number than negative four. But you have to stop and think about it. So what I would do with something like this, rather than be confused, I would just I would just play this straight. Both of your bases are five. So I'll rewrite this as five to the negative four minus negative two. So that that would be five to the negative four plus two which is five to the negative two. Understood over one equals five to the positive two down here and a one up there. Oh, and then we have to go on. They said, um, type an integer or a simplified fraction. Simplified means work, work it out, work it out. It can mean take it apart or it can mean work it out or actually it's a very overused word that often leaves people not knowing what's expected. That's why it's important to do the homework before the test. You've already worked it. You already know what you need. You already know that this is not going to be the answer. This is going to be the answer because you've already worked the problem. The tests, the weekend tests are nothing but homework problems. You must have discovered that by now. Now we hit a new rule. This is the power rule. 16 to the seventh power raised to the seventh power. Well, what, what do you do? You multiply the powers. You would get a truly horrible answer if you put that in the calculator. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad they're letting you leave it that way. There's almost no choice. Okay. Here's the rule. When you have a base raised to an exponent, and then you raise the whole thing to an exponent, you multiply the exponents. So here's a base raised to a power and then raised to a power again. You multiply the powers. Six times negative six is going to be 16 to the negative 36, which is understood to be over one, which is one, oh, <coughs> excuse me, one over 16 to the 36th power. Now here's 19 to the negative four, and all of that is raised to the negative five. Again, we multiply the powers, negative four 
times negative 5 is positive 20. This is going to be 19 raised to the 20th power. All right. Now, there are steps to this. All of these numbers and variables are raised to this power. So this is how we're going to write it. Negative seven to the negative third power. G to the negative third to the negative third power. H to the fourth to the negative third power. So this is going to be one over negative seven to the positive three power. G to the negative three times negative three is positive nine. H to the negative four times negative 12, uh, <laughs> times negative three. H to the positive four times negative three is H to the negative 12. And so of course it wants to go down there. So we can just kind of mark through it and put it down here, positive 12. We're not done yet. Yes, it appears that they want us to do the following. Negative seven to the third power is negative 343. So temporarily, this is what you've got. G to the nine over negative 343 times H to the 12th. And then, now is your chance to learn that my math lab and most math teachers, including me, are kind of traditional in what we're willing to accept. And a negative in the denominator has never been considered acceptable. So we're pulling that out to the front. Equals. negative g to the 9 over 343 h to the 12th power. And that is our answer. Here and here. Lots of little rules in math, you just meet as you go along. Has more to do with style than it has to do with correctness. All right, let's look at what I would do. Okay, I had to stop and think because there are choices. Okay, it took a minute. I'm going to clean up the parentheses first and rewrite this as four to the fifth power. No, no.
Now, four to the fifth power times seven to the fifth power over one to the negative eight. Here, seven was unhappy being underneath and wanted to come up and have a positive exponent. Sometimes making little stories helps. Now, watch this. That negative sign is acting like a negative 12. Negative one. Good grief. So that's what I'm going to make it. Four to the fifth, seven to the fifth over one to the negative one power. All of that to the eighth power, trust me. A fraction to the negative one power gives you the reciprocal. One over four to the fifth, seven to the fifth, to the eighth power. Now this also is one to the one power, by the way, and that's important because this eight power is going to multiply all of these powers. We'll have one to the eighth power over four to the 40th, yeah, 40th power times seven to the 40th power. Now one is a wonderful number. One to the eighth power is also a wonderful number because one to the eighth power is just one times 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 one, all of which is one. So our answer is one over four to the 40th times seven to the 40th. You can do this. You can do this and flip your fraction. Well, here I went to the extra step of changing to a, to a negative one and then flip your fraction. And then you've got a positive power, which you will multiply every power in the parentheses by. Have fun working this one in your homework. I think you should possibly work it several times. Okay. Here we have four times u to the fourth times v to the negative two over five times v to the negative three. Notice you have a V and a V. These are like bases. So I'm, I'm always going to try to clean up inside my parentheses before I do anything else. Here we have V to the negative two minus negative three, which is going to be four, whoops, four U to the fourth V to the negative two plus positive three over five 
to the third power. So this will be four, u to the fourth, v to the one over five, all to the third power. Now let's see how much more room I have. All right, so this is going to be four to the third power, u to the four times three power, which is 12, v to the one times three power, which is v to the third, over five to the third. And something you'll learn, let me shorten this. You'll memorize it probably without trying. And that is four to the third power is 64 and five to the third power is 125. These are numbers that you'll meet a lot, especially in college algebra. U to the 12, V to the third over 125. If not, you've always got a calculator. See if they agree. Yes. And that's how they got the answer. Step by step by step. Go slowly and carefully. Now, how, oh, we only have two more problems to go. We can survive this, I think. Make it a little bigger. Oh dear, how, maybe we won't survive. Huh. All right, don't panic, Barb. That's 27 to the one. That's three to the one. Let's see, we have, like bases here. Oh, I didn't even notice. Three will go into 27. And like bases here. Okay, well, let us clean up inside the parentheses before we hit the outside of the parentheses. We're going to have twin. 3 into 27 is 9. Now, I could say x to the 3 minus 6, but 6 is bigger than 3, and we did talk about that shortcut, so I can say x to the 6 minus 3. And now I know that, that when it comes to negative numbers, everything gets all mixed up. It is true that negative five is bigger than negative six. So if I want to remain consistent, this will be y to the negative five minus negative six. Again, you learn this stuff as you go along. And I'm going to for the sake of politeness, maybe, or clarity. Clarity, much better. I'm going to change negative four to negative one times positive four. And you probably already know why. All right, let us continue. We're going to have nine over x to the third. Now y to the negative five minus negative six is y to the negative five plus six is y to the positive one. So this is y to the positive one. Now I've got negative one times
times four. I'm going to put brackets just temporarily around this so that this is raised to the negative one power. And what happens is this. Um, equals x to the 3, y to the 1 over 9, and it's 9 to the 1, to the fourth power. Now, if you've noticed the answer, I'll talk to you about that in a minute. X to the third, Y to the fourth. No, uh, no, Barbara, good grief. X to the three times four is 12. Y to the one times four, which is four over nine to the one times four, which is nine to the fourth, that should be our answer. But now look, look what their answer is. Have they got it wrong? Have I got it wrong? Neither, we're both right. Let me show you. Nine equals three squared. We all know that. So I can keep working on this. They're just trying to shake you up. There, okay. Now, we have a base raised to a power, raised to a power again. Two times four is eight. So our answer is X to the 12, Y to the four over three to the eighth. Again, they're just trying to shake you up. Shake, rattle, and roll. You're going to encounter that sometimes. It's called stretching your mind. And you don't even need drugs to do it. Just take math. Ah, oh, we're almost done. This last problem is a doozy. Hmm. Okay. I'm considering how I'm going to work this. All right, let's. I'm going to circle our like bases and circle our like bases. And then here we have a negative three to the fifth, but notice the negative three is not in parentheses. No, you see? You've got to be careful. If that were parentheses negative three to the fifth, you would know what it equals. But no, they are not in parentheses together. What this is is negative one times three to the fifth over five to the negative four. Okay. 
now. Yeah, I'm going to work in parentheses for a while. I don't know why it helps to put my my head in my hand when I'm thinking. Maybe to hold my brains in or to hold my teeth in or something. OK. I'm going to have negative one times three to the fifth power times five to the fourth power times u to the four minus negative three power times well, two, ah, two is definitely bigger than negative six. So V to the two minus negative six. To the two, whew. Okay, I had to really think about that. Hello, baby. It's my kitty cat just came in. He's very proud. He's got a new collar. He's got his very first rabies tag. Very first set of shots. He's feeling like quite the little man, except of course he lost something too. We had to get him neutered. Nonetheless, he is doing very, very well. I hope it continues. This is going to be negative one times three to the fifth times five to the fourth times u to the four plus three over v to the two plus six. to the two equals, we're, we've just about got our parentheses cleaned up, negative one times three to the fifth times five to the fourth times u to the seventh over v to the eighth, all of that squared. All right, now. This is going to be negative one squared, three to the fifth squared, five to the fourth squared, u to the seventh squared v to the eighth squared which will be negative one squared is positive one three to the tenth five to the eighth Five times two is 10, four times two is eight, seven times two is 14. So u to the 14th power over v to the 16th power. And now do you see why ones disappear? I mean, one times three to the 10th is three to the 10th. So I am going to erase the one and make that my answer. 
Let's see if the My Math Lab people agree. 3 to the 10th, 5 to the 8th, U to the 14th, V to the 16th. Yep, yep, yepper. The more you do it, the more you work on these, the more you learn it inside your own body. You get body memory for working these problems, which is another reason you should work more, not less, homework problems when you're taking a math class. Anyway, please remember, I always say this, I know you can go back through this whole video and watch it over and over and over again. And I'll see you soon. Bye bye.